So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. Last week I was reading an article and the headline was, Firewood is the new gold. Now at first glance, I thought that headline was a little over the top until I started reading the article and it's not that far from the truth. Now the article was talking about the current energy situation in Europe. In some cases, prices have gone up over a thousand percent. Now I know we have a lot of viewers from Europe on our channel, so if you guys don't mind, let me know in the comments what it's like over there. Now here in the US, it's been a different story. We've all seen fuel prices actually coming down slowly, but they've been coming down. However, it's my opinion, not too far in the distant future, we're gonna be in the same situation as Europe. Right now, Archie and I are going to go fill up our off-road diesel tank. Then when we get back to the house, we'll talk more about it. So we just got back to the house, and I just got uh, about 90 gallons worth of fuel there. And on my way over, I couldn't find my reading glasses. Didn't know where they were at. And I got to the gas station, and they were sitting right there the whole time. They made it about five miles without blowing off. Hard to believe. So back in 1975, when long lines at the gas pumps and oil embargoes were fresh in everyone's minds, Congress came up with the idea to start the SPR, that is the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Now when we hear about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve or Strategic Oil Reserve, I think a lot of people are thinking there's these giant tanks somewhere where they store all this oil. That's not the case. It's actually kept in giant caverns underground. But anyway, over time, the government kept filling up these caverns with oil. In 2010, it reached its peak at about 726 million barrels of oil, and it had never dropped below 450 million barrels since 1984 until now. So Melissa and Axel uh, just came out to visit for a minute. The sun's trying to peek out a little bit, but it's chilly. It's cold. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. In March of this past year, uh, 2022, the president started to release 1 million barrels of oil each day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And the reason he did that is 100% political. I know I'll catch some heat for saying that, but you have an administration, you know, out of one side of their mouth saying that they need to reduce carbon emissions, and on the other side, they're releasing oil which what that does, it increases supply. Uh, more people will go out and travel with uh, lower fuel prices. So it was 100% politically motivated, but it actually worked because it's lowering oil prices, right? And we all see that at the pump right now. Problem is that all ends here, I think the middle or the end of October, coincidentally, right before the election. So my opinion is, I think we're going to see oil prices and fuel prices go back up through the roof after this election. Uh, we have pretty much not completely depleted the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but like I said earlier, I think I did, it's at the lowest point it has been since 1984. So they can't keep doing that forever. And what's going to happen is they're going to try to replenish this. Uh, some people think the oil reserve isn't as necessary today now that we can produce oil from shale here in the United States, but it's still a good idea for us to have a reserve, and that, that reserve is depleted right now. The only thing that may save us uh, from higher oil prices, and this isn't good news either, is we're in a recession, and uh, who knows where things are going to go. With rising interest rates, demand may stay down a little bit where we don't get hit too hard, but by all indications, uh, it appears to me, at least in the short term, you know, after the election, November, December, January, especially if a cold winter, something like that, I think we are going to see a huge increase in oil prices. And so back to the title of that article, 
you know firewood is the new gold i think i don't think i know it's a good idea to cut wood and to get a wood burner right now there's people in europe that are you know running all over the place trying to find ways to heat their house this winter and i just think it's best to be prepared uh but things aren't great they really aren't and uh a whole bunch of shenanigans going on in my opinion you know what i mean i really believe That's that true. but uh but the sun's coming out but the sun is coming out it is cold right now for what what is it it's the end of september yeah. right now and uh it's been getting down into like the high 30s in the mornings and stuff yeah but uh, what are you doing here, Axel? Mike had a piece of jerky earlier. And yeah. And Axel could smell it. <laughs> it was like, oh my goodness, you smell so good. Never had a piece in his life, but boy, he knew that he knew. is the good <laughs> stuff. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to report back here in a little bit uh, from down at the wood yard because we're going to cut some more firewood. I am, uh, since it is the new gold. So I was going to cut some firewood, but I have to get organized down here at the wood yard. I had a, a couple small white pine logs in the dump trailer. I got them out of here, and I just loaded up my uh, skid loader bucket. I'm going to be taking just my bucket down to the West Virginia property. I will be renting a SVL 75, a little smaller than my 97, to uh, finish up the driveway down there. That will be happening in the next day or two. And I needed a tooth bucket, and they don't have a tooth bucket. They just have a smooth bucket. He's gonna send it with that. I don't like just a smooth bucket. I like the tooth bucket for cutting and grading. It's just some people do, some people don't. So I'll take my bucket down, use it on their machine, and then uh, bring it back when I'm done. So that'll be coming up in the next couple of days. Also just put another big white pine on the mill. Uh, this is another one from West Virginia. Decent sized log. It's probably 25 inches in diameter. I'll get about uh, 200 board feet of lumber out of that. And it'll look just like this stuff right here. Once I get a big pile of this lumber here, we're going to take it up to the building and uh, stack and sticker it inside there. And by the way, stacking and stickering lumber is probably one of my least favorite things about having a sawmill, but you have to do it. But once it's done and you get those piles nice and level and all your stickers straight up and down, I like that part. I like it when it's all done. But anyway, back to what we were talking about. Record high energy prices in Europe, and they're saying firewood is the new gold. Will that happen here? I'm not sure. I really don't know. But I do know things are pretty screwed up. Like that video that I did the other day uh, from the Kentucky Speedway, where there were 40,000 new Super Duties sitting there waiting for either chips or other parts. Some people said they were just waiting for the badges on the front of the trucks. I don't know. But things are just crazy. 
Now, when you think about it, a new truck, you know, a lot of companies are depending on getting their new trucks. A lot of individuals are waiting for their new trucks, but it's really not the end of the world. Uh, but what happens if these shortages and disruptions are with energy or food, you know, things that keep us warm or food? It's something to think about. It really is. I do think uh, a wood burner, I don't like telling anyone what to do. I don't care what anybody does. But if you want my opinion, I think if you don't have an alternative source of heat, uh, it may be a good idea to look into that. You know, if fuel prices get so high that you can't drive anywhere, that's one thing. It's not a good thing, but that's one thing. But if you can't heat your home, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a whole other ball of wax right there. It really is. So something to think about. Uh, we're going to start cutting here pretty soon probably uh, next week or the week after. Now, all that wood that we'll be cutting will be for next winter. I still have probably about 16 or 17 cords of wood to sell for this year, and that'll leave me about uh, three cords for our own use. So we're good for this winter, and I got a big pile of logs here and about 100 acres of woods if need be. So like I said earlier, any of you guys from Europe that's watching this video, let me know in the comments how things are going over there. And as for the rest of us here in the States, let me know what you think is going to happen. Uh, none of us can predict the future, but I think we all know something just isn't right. But anyway, I think that's about it for today's video. Appreciate you all being here, and I'll catch you on the next one.